Okay, here we are. We're going to be removing a panel from fiberglass doors today. There's only a couple of really basic tools needed. Three, in fact, that we're going to be using, and that is a nice, clean rubber mallet. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to use a hammer, per se, because that can damage the molding or break the glass if it's hit in the right way. So you've got that, and then you want a rigid uh, kind of a putty knife here that's got a little more stability to it. This will actually be able to get us up underneath the molding to get it started, and then we'll use the mallet to clear the rest. Then we have a real thin, sharpened putty knife that we're going to use later on. Once the door's flipped over, we're going to cut away the glass from the tape. So these are the three tools. There's no screwdrivers, there's no other tools needed. This is it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the rigid tool that I mentioned before. When you're taking off the compression molding from fiberglass doors, you're going to want to release the bottom and the top moldings first. So I'm going to get this up underneath the corner and kind of start to work it to where it loosens up from the door and begins to release the compression. You can see it's starting to loosen up a little bit. Some of them pop off a little easier than others. There's a lot of compression with these pieces. If a thicker piece of glazing tape has been used, or in this case, we've got some risers, the bottom one was a little harder to get off, so you've got to pry at it. Just be delicate. Don't force it or be rough. Try to do it as slow as possible when you're removing the mold. Um, you can see the sides uh, come off usually a lot easier than the bottom can pop. Now that the molding's been released from the door, you can see a black line in here that goes around the perimeter of door, and that's the glazing tape that holds the glass into the door. This glass will not come out with this tape in here like that, so we're going to now need to lay the door and the glass down upside down so we can chisel around the glazing tape to remove the glass from the door. So now the door has been laid down upside down. You'll notice there's a stationary molding here. This is the opposite side of the molding that we just re uh, removed. With this particular door, there's a half inch glass inside this door. Uh, some people will have the dual pane version, which has two eighth inch pieces. Gonna be a little bit different story because the weight is a lot different with half inch and the eighth inch dual panes. This is a lot heavier. So when I put the door up here, it already started to separate. So I'm going to start there because then if you have separation occurring when you flip your door over to cut it out, you're going to want to begin in that area. Now in this particular piece, because of its weight, it is going to give way a lot sooner than the other pieces. For instance, the eighth inch pieces, this will be stuck really tightly and not have this much give. So you'll be having to go at a rate of speed like this. You'll find as you go, you'll go a little bit at a time, separating the glass from the stationary molding. Now you've run into the tape though. Now I've run into more tape that's stuck to glass. So I'm just gonna keep on edging along. When you're doing this, there's no rush because we want to ensure the safety of the glass. So we just edge along. You kind of, you'll notice that 
hopefully you can in the film, that my putty knife is slightly elevated. It's not straight. Reason being is I like to get it underneath here and give it a little bit of a flip up, a bend, so that along the way, I'm not scratching the glass. I'm actually removing the tape without scratching the piece. As I cut along this piece, the separation you can see is already occurring all the way around to here. So as I reach this side and cut along the bottom, this whole portion will lay down and I'll have an easy string to cut at the final cut. The same applies with the dual pane eighth inch, but there's so much more weight involved in these half inch pieces that these luckily give us a lot easier time because it's putting an automatic suppression on the glazing tape. There it goes. See the weight is starting to take over. Is that a good way to do it? Mm -hmm. It's edging ever so, you know, only about half the blade um, width. Not like a full blade, because you might miss some at that point. So you kind of overlap your cuts. Okay, okay. I can see my bending this will be better yeah. because you're not going to like scratch. Straight into your glass. And not, and not, be careful not to like start going in too far away because mm -hmm. then you can scratch it that way too. And that big diamond ring too, we got to watch out for that. Right? <laughs> Probably should not wear rings like I do anyway too. <laughs> while doing it as well. I just wanted to show that a girl could do it too. Yes. It's, you know, it's, not, it's not hard. Just time consuming. No, everything is the same way. We are a business of finesse, taking our time, doing it right. We can do it day day. Delphi's doing it. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Yay! Get right up. Getting all the straggler tape so we have nothing, con no connectivities from the glass and the door. So we can safely remove our door from the scene. Wow, look at that. Okay. Now, we're back where we started. And then we have to remove all of the remaining glazing tape that's in here. We can use the same tool. We're going to use the sharp um, putty knife to essentially remove all of this. And then we're going to use a nice sharp brand new razor blade on the glass. So we'll start with the glass. So we're going to get a brand new razor blade for one just to start. And you've got a lot of residue and tape and you're going to want to stay within the realm of the tape as far as removal so don't go don't go past. don't go past the black line as and it can much be cleaned as up. what we're trying to do is just remove like the extra thickness right mm. remove and the extra thickness yeah okay so that we get a nice clean stick when we reinstall the glass right into the door nothing about this removal installation is super difficult it's just tedious and you want to have a good surface for everything and you want to clean it up properly. You don't want to leave all this residue on here. So you're not going to get a proper um, stick when we reinstall it. What kind of pressure are you using? Light, substantial? It's pretty, it's pretty heavy pressure. Pretty heavy pressure, okay. Yeah, as heavy as you can go because you're trying to really get up underneath all of the stickum. Okay. Without, again, going too far. And, you know, don't be sparing with the blades. You know, like I'm already doing just one run here. I may even at this point change the blade up to a fresh blade to even do the other side. You're just gliding the blade along, trying to get up underneath as much of the stickum as possible to remove it without again scratching the glass. You're not doing it at an angle, you're doing it flat against. I'm doing flat against the side, yeah. But yet the blade is angulated in this pattern to get up underneath the stick them and to clean it properly. And now we have Chelsea making and scraping the glass, getting up underneath it with a fresh blade, yes. nicely removing the tape here. Goes to show anyone can do this. It's simple, but you want to do it 
carefully as to not scratch the glass. Show you a trick here, bro. Hmm. Or daughter. Take oh, the, uh, here comes dad. Take your uh, finger. Okay. Stick it a little past the blade. Set yeah. it where you want it and see the finger is now a guide. Very good example. Yeah, I didn't really say that's what so, I was doing automatically. Bro, daughter. You learn something every day. Yeah. So use your fingers. You got to be careful. The edge is not sharp. I did that automatically yourself. and I didn't think about so stand, that. But yeah, you put your middle finger as a guide. Spin into it. There you go. Careful you're not, you're going further than you need to. There you go. Never go further than you need to. Okay. Ready? Okay, so we have some acetone here. Now we've taken and done the blade removal all the way around the piece. Now we're just going to get some acetone on a paper towel. And we're going to take it along the edge and scrub the edge where the glue is. Trying to remove all remaining residue. Does the acetone hurt the sandblasting at all? It won't hurt anything with the blasting or the glass. We actually use it a lot of times for stain removal. If there's oils or something that get on your glass, a bottle of acetone around will remove the oil from the sandblasting. Then you can get regular Windex and towel and do your normal cleaning after you've removed the stain. That won't get removed with Windex. So now we have the remaining black tape inside this groove. This can get a little tricky removing it because you have to, again, completely remove the black from the area and scrape it out of the door Got it. as much as possible so that we can have a good surface to glue again. So I'm in with the putty knife, taking it down as much as possible. Is it okay to leave some little residue in there or? A little bit you want to remove as much as possible. If you see that it's going, that it's elevated or a, a, certainly a big lump like this, right, right, right. you need to get a better surface. Okay. Uh, so it's, we try to remove as much as possible when we're going to reinstall. That way we can have a flat, it's more so with a flat surface. Mm -hmm. So we can get a hold of it. See, I'll get a hold of a little piece and try to scrape it as close to the edge as possible. As far as time, the most time-consuming part of doing this is going to be getting the glass out of the door and this part, I think, and right? And yes, cleaning the interior of the door to get a nice, clean surface. Okay. All the way around this door okay. is we're going to be more time. And there's obviously yes. areas that don't have any, That's but all plus. these areas, yeah, it is <laughs> a plus when it glass. stays. <laughs> yes. Which is easier because yeah. it really adheres more so to this. But see, I'll get in this groove right here and I'll begin to remove it and separate it from the edge. Oh, and that's where some of your time comes in that takes a little bit longer preparing this door to have a good connection. Yep. But once this is cleaned out and scraped, and you see that you have a nice, smooth, flat, smooth area, obviously there's lumps that need to be removed. So like this is fine. Once this is smooth like this, then this that's is okay. Fine. Okay. There's still stick them in there. You don't have to take it to the acetone level like we did with the glass and remove it because that because of the stick them it'll adhere to that fine. Okay. So we have the door clean as much as possible to um, you know remove all of the the cushiony glazing tape. And now we're going to reapply the glazing tape, which uh, is the same thing you'll do once you have a roll of the tape that we'll send you to install. We're gonna get the glazing tape all the way up to the top, into that ridge, but slightly up onto the lip. There's this little lip that you'll see right here, and then you'll get in the groove, but slightly onto the lip. So you're getting as, as much connection as possible. We're going to go all the way down with it, pushing it down. And we'll trim it. Same razor blade. I told you it's a minimal amount of tools. 
We're gonna carry it now over the bottom. Slightly on the lip. Trimming right on the edge of the other piece. Okay. Do you want to make sure it's all the way on there? Yeah. Pushing down the pig. Bring it nice and tight. Okay. So now we're going to move the white outer film. You'll get the blade underneath. Slowly peeling it. Once you remove the film off the outside, you have a very, very sticky tape. When you're placing the glass on here, as soon as it hits this, it's going to stick, no matter where you have it set. The trick that we learned in the industry is you can take some glass cleaner like this, spray it on the tape, and I can slide it around on this tape now without it sticking. in place where we want it to be. See, so now with the Windex in there, do you see how it slides? Mm. Once that dries, it's stuck forever. Right. So what we do is we check our gaps. And depending on the piece, we can, we can wedge in any type of uh, depending on what kind of panel it is. This particular panel doesn't require it because we'll have designs that have pinstripes going around a pantry and we need to make sure that they're set at a certain level. We'll need to then move this over and set in rubber blocks. That's why I do the spray, so because I can still move this. Now when that dries, it's stuck forever. So now we're gonna do the moldings. We start with the side moldings. It's the exact opposite of what we did before. We started with the bottom and the top. Now we're gonna start with the side. There's your mallet. Now what you wanna do is flush this. If you'll come over to this side, you're gonna see that it's, it's flush here. You can see it's real nice and flush. You see that? And I'm gonna take and I'm going to tap in the top. Then I'm gonna to go to the bottom. And I'm going to tap in the bottom. The reason I do the top and the bottom is because if I start at the top and begin to push the molding down to the bottom, a lot of times it will extend past the insert level. So you wanna just tap in the top, tap in the bottom, and then work your way up the entire piece. And that side is in. Okay, we're repeating the procedure on the left-hand side. We're again going to tap in the top, come down to the bottom, tap in the bottom, work our way up the piece, and that's in. Now we're going to grab the bottom pieces and top piece. They're going to evenly decide now, there's, there's no difference between the top and bottom pieces, no, right? They're, okay. they're exactly the same. Or the sides, I guess. Yeah, exactly. They're interchangeable. Very rarely we get a piece. But the same thing that I do on the, the long ones, we do on the bottoms. Hitting in the sides, then the center. That way it doesn't shift left or right. It's evenly distributed. And when you get it in a nice spot. And you're angling one, upwards or I'm down, angling, you're angling I'm towards. angling it up so that you're, you're flipping a lip underneath. So you're just tapping in that side. Same with this. You'll see where I'm, I'm hitting it. 